Hey guys, it's Ollie, and sorry I haven't made a tutorial in so long, it's been pretty busy and such. So, uh, today I'm making a highly requested um, and pretty cool tutorial, and it's how to make menus in your game. And I mean, like, you start up your game and then it has an option for starting your game, and maybe for options and quit game, or whatever, like that. So, first things first, I'm going to be doing this with the Pong game we made at an earlier stage in this series, so go and get the source code of this, the link will be in the description. And all I have done so far is drawn, let me, let me run this to show you. I've drawn this here, and as you can see, nothing happens when I'm pressing the keys, because we haven't started the threads anywhere, and we haven't done anything to sort of control how this is drawn. So, um, first things first, I think we should uh, globally declare the threads first of all, to, so we are able to use them in our game. And just one other thing, these I've made our start button and quit button out of rectangles, and you'll see why uh, a bit later. So first things first, globally declare our threads, because we need to use them at different points, um, because we're going to be making some methods and using them elsewhere. So thread um, ball equals new thread and we do b as the object and then let's see here we need to say thread ball or no sorry thread p1 equals new thread and if you watch the pong tutorials I'll put a link in the description as well you'll notice that we actually declare our paddle variables in our ball thingy here and sorry for sniffing I'm kind of got a cold at the moment but anyways uh, we say b.p1 to access that object and then we create a third thread called player2 and that equals a new thread which is b.p2 and now that that's done um, oops, if we run this now um, still nothing happens but we've done the first stage declaring our threads and then now we need to make a method which starts our game and it, this essentially starts the threads because we don't want the threads to start whilst the menu is showing because then the game would be running in the background which is not what we want so underneath um, constructor I guess we can make public void start game and all we need to do for this is say um, ball dot start p1 dot start and p2 dot start and that starts all three of the threads when we call that method and we will call it when um, when we have finished this program that method is going to call when we click on this start game button up here so let's see here um, the next thing we're going to do is as you see clearly here the game and the menu are showing on top of each other which doesn't look very good so we need to split these paint methods into two sections one for the menu and one for the game drawings and we need to do this by making a boolean value which tells whether the game has started or not so boolean game started and this will initially equal false and in our paint method or our draw method rather in this case um, we can say at the top here, we can say if um, not game started. So if the game hasn't started, we do this, which is draw the menu. And someone asked me about indenting how you do it. You can either highlight it all and press tab, and then if you want to indent backwards, you use these two buttons up here to go forwards and backwards uh, indentation. So that's just that. So if the game isn't started we're going to draw the menu and then we need to say else so if the game is started we will draw the rest of it and we'll indent that. So let's run this now. As you can see we only have our menu now because our game hasn't started and in our start game method we are going to call game started and we're going to set that equal to true which is going to switch the paint methods around it's going to stop drawing this and start drawing this and essentially start our game so now we need to say when 
should we start our game. Now we should start our game when the start game button is pressed. So as you can see I have a mouse handler class down here and in the mouse pressed first of all, we'll do the mouse move later, in the mouse pressed we're going to make two integers called mx and my for mouse x and mouse y and this is equal to e dot get x and then uh, int my equals e dot get y and now that we have our x and y coordinates we need to tell whether our uh, button has been pressed and it's a simple um, mathematical formula for this we say if and then if you notice up here let me just see we have our start button and quit button and we can call uh, variables from our rectangle and those variables are x y width and height so we're going to do that to tell whether the mouse has been clicked on top of the button so we'll start with the x, we need to say if mx, so if the mouse was clicked at a point which is greater than the start button, and I'm actually going to copy that word because we're going to be writing it quite a lot of times, so if the mouse is clicked at a point greater than the start button's x, and if mx, but it was, so if it was pressed greater than the x button of, the x coordinate of the button, but also it needs to be less than mx needs to be the, the mouse needs to be pressed at a point less than the start button dot x plus the start button dot width and what that does it tests whether the mouse has been clicked within the x coordinates of the um button let me try and show you here oops that's because we haven't done anything i'll put an empty block and run this so at the moment nothing will happen but if we click out here it's our code isn't going to detect anything but then if we come within here the mouse is being clicked at a point greater than x but also less than the x plus the width so within this space here it's going to recognize our code and out here it's not in here yep out here no except we haven't done y yet so if we click down here it's still within the x boundaries if you picture an imaginary line down the side of it there so we need to do the exact same with the y and I'll delete that little block we have and I'll hit enter so I can show you the whole this entire thing and it's the exact same thing uh, if my is greater than start button dot y and we also need to add an and at the end of that um my less than start button dot y plus the height this time and that is all we need to do and now if we hit enter we can set stuff why is this errored ah we need to say start button dot height there we go that's good and now that that we've done that we can say um, when the mouse button is pressed we can start the game which is our method that we made and that's pretty much it so let's view this as you can see I'm clicking out here nothing's happening I'll click in start game and our game starts but at the moment nothing it is our menus working but it doesn't really uh, look very good so we're gonna add another thing which is uh, a hovering effect so the color changes when you hover over your start button so um, we're actually not going to do I've included a button that says quit but we're actually not going to do that this time because there's not much point because you can just hit X on your program we'll do that later at a later date but we need to make another boolean called um, let's say start hover for if it hovers on the start button and we also need one called quit hover for hovering over our quit button and even though our quit button won't do anything it's still good to look nice so start hover and quit hover and now we are going to make a color switch in our paint um, thingy method and the first one is here so if um, if it's not being hovered so if the start is not being hovered on it's going to be cyan the color of the button will be cyan and I'll just copy that and then we can say else it's gonna be let's say pink 
and we can do we can copy this and paste it at let's see this point here and we can change start hover to quit hover and now nothing will happen at the moment because we haven't told when our quit hover and start hovers should change but we're going to do that in the mouse move method and we'll just actually we'll just copy this whole thing here because that formula was quite long to write out so if we copy that here instead of starting the game we want to say start hover equals true so if the mouse is being moved inside the start button then it equals true then all we need to say is else start hover equals false and then we copy all of this and I'm actually going to do this in a notepad document because I'm going to replace the word start button with the word quit button to save myself writing out that entire thing there we go and copy this or paste it rather and change these to quit hover oops and that should be pretty much it let's run this and as you can see when we hover over our buttons they change color and when we click on them quit game doesn't do anything but start game we'll click on start game and our game will begin and uh, sorry this tutorial took so long guys, it's already over 10 minutes, but I will go now. Uh, thanks for watching, please subscribe, I'll see you later.